Hello guys and welcome to a new Warno video today by me Vulcan. In this one I'm really excited to bring you guys the first of two show matches between mixed teams of content creators including myself and Eugen Systems employees. This was played on a preview build so do bear that in mind but as you can see this is a brand new map we're seeing today, Triple Strike. Without Protoss though, this wouldn't have been possible. So a huge thanks to him for setting up these show matches and also the tournaments this weekend, raising money for Action Against Hunger. The donations for that are still open. So if you have the spare cash and would like to donate, make sure to check out the link in the description or the comments. We've already smashed the last total of over $1,800, but let's just keep it going. It would be awesome to see how far we can get. Also, thanks to Eugen for showing off this new map, as well as the other content creators who got involved, Bandana, Yogdog, El Bowser, and anyone else I missed, for helping promote this awesome event for a great cause. It's, it's great to be involved with this, and the community has just really, really come together uh, for this whole weekend. It's been absolutely incredible. But without further ado, let's get into the game. So, in this one, we're playing a four versus four, on the new map, Triple Strike, and you can see that every person on each team is playing a different division. So on our team, we have Magolan, Ned, uh, Bandana, and myself, who are going to be playing the 8th Infantry, 3rd Armoured, 2nd Panzergrant, and 5th Panzer Division, respectively. And on the opposing team, we have Protoss, uh, Yogdog, Storzk, and Rick. We are going to be playing with the 7th Panzer Division, 39th Guards, 79th Guards, and the 4th Motschutzen, respectively. So, Magolan and Ned, Storzk and Rick are the Eugen employees, myself, Bandana, Protoss, and Yogdog, the content creators. So, two and two on each team. I'm going to be going over to the left-hand side here. You can see my deployment coming about. Got plenty of these Jaeger Aufklader at the start there with an Alouette just to cover off the left hand side. And then behind that, I'm going to be having the Leopard. I've also got a Marder on the left hand side there with an Iltis Furongs to capture these back sectors. All the back sectors on this map are currently uh, three points. And also, this was designed for 3v3 uh, as opposed to 4v4, so just bear that in mind. Uh, but yeah, another Leopard there with a couple of Roland twos and the Pioneers. Now, I had heard that uh, Protoss was was liking his air spam, so I was going about the Roland twos because the Roland twos they do not have uh, radar, or at least they cannot be targeted by seed. So... I was basically using the standard Roland 2s here, which have the 5 HE 65% accuracy, and I was just going to try and spam them about throughout the game to try and counter. But in the mid we have uh, Bandana and Ned, and then on the right hand side we have Magolan, who is going to be uh, pushing up with his 8th Infantry to the best of his ability. So this map is really, really cool. I'll just kind of take you through it. In the middle here, it really, really reminds me of Wargame Red Dragon, uh, the map Bloody Ridge, where you have this sort of middle area, which is slightly lower in elevation than either side. So controlling the high ground on either side is important to help you advance in the center of the map. So this whole area here, is very very similar to Bloody Ridge and Wargamer Dragon if you guys are familiar with that especially with like the town on the left hand side here and then the hills on the right hand side but then either side of that you have these extra areas where they're quite open uh, in between sort of tree lines I guess so on my side it's a bit wider on the right hand side it's not as wide you've got a lot of this forested area which you're going to have to fight over to control because it would put a lot of pressure particularly in areas like this over the road so i'd expect this area to be hotly contested by infantry whereas on my side this area is not as important because the 50 50 is further up and so you're most likely going to bump into people around here and therefore this area is not as important. The open ground is much more vital 
on this side of the map, which is why I'm opting for the double Leopard 2A3 start uh, with the Roland 2s. So we're off. Uh, in the middle, I really like the idea of like having these two towns and then sort of this more forested slash open area. Like there's like two sort of more open areas on either side. This one blocked line of sight wise by buildings though. And yeah, that looked really cool. I, I really, really like this part of the map. It's really nice. Bloody Ridge was one of my favorite maps in war games. So I'm really happy to see a map like it. But it'd be interesting to see how this plays on 3v3 where you have one person in the middle and then like one person on either side in each of these sort of lanes. Uh, but these center sort of sectors, these guys are all, uh, these are two point sectors. Uh, there's two contested sectors on the right and mid. There is no contested sector on the left hand side. So you have a little bit more of a space to breathe here, which was quite nice. I didn't have to worry too much about contesting the enemy sector, rather just putting pressure on my opponent opponent's sector. So I'm getting quite far up here at the start. The Jaeger Alfkala, they are not really seeing anything just yet. So I'm adjusting the orders to get them even further up. Now some of the divisions on the opposing team, particularly the 39th, which is why I turn, up, turn out to be up against with Yogdog here. They don't have much good recon. So like, for example, these Grenzers aren't really the best because they don't have AT. I think the only AT recon infantry that the 39th gets is in fact the Resvitka, uh, the four man Resvitka squads. But there goes the first airplane of the match in a big hole fireball lands in front of the Grenzers there as my Jaeger Alfklader start engaging them. The Jaeger Alfklader super strong recon squad at the moment. Absolutely going to mince the Grenzers out in the open, those poor chaps. So in the meantime, still squeezing the Jaeger Alfklader further up as much as possible. Any that I'd already unloaded, I actually reloaded into the Unimogs and carried on with. Uh, got the Leopard and Roland 2 moving all the way up there. So I've managed to make quite a lot of ground off the start here with my Recon Infantry. And uh, the Jaeger Alfklar on the left here, they're also going to be getting quite far up. And the Alouette hasn't spotted anything on the left-hand side just yet. So no worries about a flank. Just got to deal with what's in front of me. And I'm getting the Roland 2 up as soon as possible to be able to stop that MI-24 from shooting my Leopard if I want to use it. See the other Roland 2 and Leopard are here on the left hand side. There we go, Grenzer coming under fire from the 2A3, just hoping to pop that before it gets into cover, but wasn't quite able to. I had to keep moving forwards. And now I'm going to be looking for the engagement with the BRM potentially, but here comes the first artillery round onto my position, so I'm going to be wanting to move out of the way of that. Banana on my right did do a good job of kind of focusing on this town early on. It's good. That he's in this position because it means that I can quite confidently push into November without having to worry too much about being flanked and if I do get flanked then I am going to be aware of it because he's got recon here so yeah that would be really nice anyway Leopard 2A3 going to be engaging the TATBs on this left hand side get some really good initial engagements two shots in I'm quite happy to tank this in the front armor. He's got the 18 penetration. I've got the 19 front armor. So he's only going to be doing like two damage at that sort of range. Whilst I'm able to just chunk his 14 front armor with my 19 penetration. So yeah, the TATP is losing that long range engagement. I managed to kill one early on, which is already good value for the 2A3. Not quite paying itself off just yet, but 200 point tank going down is a good start. So Panzergunfuhrer now being brought up as well. I was preparing this not only to give veterancy to my 2A3 and the Roland 2, but also so that I could then use it to contest the November sector. So that was the plan. But currently, um, Magulan has not contested the Foxtrot sector and we are not contesting the Golf sector. So our opponents are at the uh, plus two, uh, which is okay. It's not the end of the world just yet. Uh, but I was wary that I wanted to get a move on and basically break to the next tree line so that I could then contest November. But here comes a MiG-21. Rocket strike onto the Leopard 2A3. Roland's do a fantastic job of intercepting that. And we take it down. Conquer squad. 
going to be firing away onto my leopard. I did lose some, leave some flames underneath the leopard there with the explosion, so that Conquer squad not having much of a fun time as he does get taken out. Those Conquers can be pretty nasty, particularly if they hit you in the sidearm, and those are the new squads that have been added more recently. Uh, the HGM squads. I think the most nasty of all the HGM squads is in fact the Toad 2 that you can get with the uh, US divisions. Uh, that can be really nasty even in the frontal armor because it has very high penetration. Yeah, getting the Panzer Gun Fielder into position. And I've moved the Leopard to A3 back for the time being, just waiting for my supply trucks to arrive. Keeping supply trucks with your units is really, really important for the game because you can use them to repair and you can also use them to resupply your infantry. So supply is like more important than ever. Whereas in Steel Division 2, for example, the supply trucks were more there for ammo. And there were certain times where like ammo is pretty important for certain vehicles because they'd use it up very quickly. But... In this case, being able to actually repair and resupply your squads is is huge. So I yeah, made sure to have my Unimogs there to repair the, this damage that I've taken both on this Leopard 2A3 and this Le Le Leopard 2A3. And managing the amount of damage that these take uh, is also something that I was doing throughout the game. Just making sure that I wasn't taking too much damage and kind of like min-maxing the engagements uh, with my opponent's tanks. And I'm aware that the 39th doesn't have... You know, anything too scary the biggest tank that he has is the t80bv so my leopard 2a3 quite happy to deal with that if it has to but making a little bit of push here now yeah elf color going to be pushing forwards with the sapori against oh against the sapori sorry btr60 is going to be engaging it leopard 2a3 trying to help out with the sapori there i didn't want to move it too far forwards just in case enemy aircraft came in uh, and therefore like you know snipe it do have to be uh, careful of that throughout well, tornado coming in there Gets a missile off against the SU-25s, but unfortunately misses. But in the mid, they're now contesting this centre sector. And on the right-hand side, it's also contested with Mahulan uh, up against Protoss here. So Leopard 2A3 still going up against the Sapori, moving a Pioneer into the edge on this right hand side just avoiding any engagement with anything to the left leopard 2a3 has also got an extended engagement with the t80bv so I, i'm able to take that out the t80bv actually failed to land a single shot on my 2a3 so that was really nice for me and i'm able to repair this 2a3 as after it finished its engagement here so yeah pioneers unloaded on the right hand side i'm now able to like attack move them from right to left if there was any more infantry in there but there wasn't for the time being so probably would have seen it with my recon t62s are now coming across these are the uh, new t62s that were added very recently these ones have the eight gems su25 though <laughs> that's some nasty napalm from my infantry and I do lose both of those infantry squads. SU-22 M4P coming in. This is the anti-radar variant of the SU-22. It would be able to tar target my Rolands if they were like the better variant, but not this time around. The M4K comes in as well. That is the one with the TV missiles. And I believe it blew up one of my leopards here, got a tasty shot and left my 2A3 as a wreck. But it was good for me to get this Jaeger Alpha all the way up here. You can see they have lost quite a few men. But with two men remaining, they're still able to see what's coming down this road. That would give me information throughout the game as to what I was going to be coming up against. But currently a plus two now uh, for the enemy as Malgalan has been pushed out of Foxtrot for the time being. So I feel like I'm a little bit under pressure to make some more ground here. I need to make sure that I have all the support that I need, particularly anti-air wise. So even more Roland's gonna be on the way. And you'll see that all six of my standard Roland twos are now gonna be on the field. All of these are not able to be targeted by seed. And that was a conscious decision because the East Germans can get a lot of those SU-22 M4Ps with those anti-radar missiles. Uh, the MW1 did come in for a Cluster Strike, which managed to kill one of the Conquer squads that York Dog hadn't unloaded yet. Gave me a little bit more confidence for my 2A3s to start pushing forwards at some point. 
currently just you know building these up building up the Rolands so that if anything comes in like this MiG-27 which is also a seed aircraft it gets shot down no problemo and I don't lose a thing that's happening there being revealed by the Jaeger Afkara Marder 1A3 going to be helping with the fire support there but going to be backing that up as the HGMs start coming in don't want to lose anything unnecessarily. Rocket artillery now on its way towards me. And here we go. Initializing the push. Yig Alkla leading the charge. That means if anything fires at me, I'm going to be able to see it in these tree lines. And if I get close enough, I'll just straight up spot it anyway. Like, for example, this Grenzer squad on the left-hand side. And they're going to be following it up with the Leopard 2A3s. And I've also got the Panzer Gun Führer. Excuse me. Uh, running across the open here. So just hoping to get that into the sector to contest. And if we can kill this Grenzer, then I can probably try and hide it somewhere. But I managed to pick off the Berusa, which that was nice. And my 24 is going to be heading over with its Cocon missiles, though. I'm going to have to start moving forwards my Roland 2s soon. I get the Panzergrenfjord in there. Now I'm just going to be looking for cover. The 2A3 again as well, also finding cover there. And now I'm finally giving that order to the Roland 2s to move forwards and engage this MI-24 if I can. Meanwhile on the right-hand side, Jäger Afkala just finishing off the BTR-60. Uh, another SG-22 does come in and does take out one of my Leopards there because my Rolands weren't really far, far enough forwards to protect that. Kind of overextended a little bit with it. But we did shoot down the aircraft in reply after the fact, so that's not too bad. Now I am bringing up these Sitterungs. Now the Sitterungs in this case, they're more just kind of there to run forwards and be shot at. Like they advance into enemy fire to reveal enemy positions. And they're also pretty good at taking on enemy infantry at range as well because they do have 11 G3A4s, but another nice kill there against the SU-22. And you see this Zapadi against the Shizurungs at long range are outnumbered and outgunned, even though these Shizurungs do lack veterancy. We see the uh, BTR-60 back here, so probably going to be the only command that Yogdog has. And so far we've done pretty well using our Leopard 2A3s to assert armor dominance against Yogdog. The 39th uh, really struggles at the moment in team games, in my opinion, particularly against the heavy armor, because it has very limited ways of, of dealing with it. In sort of close range engagements, they can do relatively well with things like the BMP3s, which can really do a lot of damage against other infantry, but I feel like heavy tanks just do overrun this division quite well. Got line of sight onto the coop here, so going to be having a go at that, and managed to pop it. That was very good. And my Jäger Afkara, accompanied by the Citadungs, are going to be continuing their push forwards. We've now got three of these Leopard 2s here. We've still got the multiple Rolands. You can see all six of them creating a huge AA net on that side. And meanwhile, uh, Bandana and Ned continue their push in the centre of this map. So I feel like the side here probably could cause a lot more a problem for the units down I don't know if you'd really call this a valley because it's not really that much of a difference in elevation but I feel like the high ground on either side could really put a lot of pressure onto this center and you can see Bandana is kind of using that initially on the left hand side there to come down the ridge but lots and lots of aircraft coming in SU-22 M4 coming in with the bombing strike onto the Marda the uh, SU-22 M4Ps with the anti-radar coming in and popping those radar AA. Uh, but meanwhile on the left hand side, Sitterung's Jäger Aufklada coming under quite a lot of fire. I'm going to be trying to get my uh, Leopard to support and I'm also trying to make more ground on the right hand side now. We managed to spot the Eagler there. And the Marder 1A3 is going to help take that out. I was actually quite impressed with how well the Marders were doing in the sort of fire support role. Like the auto cannons have got better since they fixed the bug uh, that they had. 
which I believe was to do with like them having two different ranges or something but now they only have one range it means that when they get closer uh, they you know get better accuracy so it's a pretty big deal really T62 going to be coming under fire from the Milans of the Marder 183s but no luck just yet the T62 actually going to be pretty good at dealing with these sort of APCs as long as it doesn't get hit I'm just constantly missing those Milan shots Leopard 2A3 is trying to kind of stay back. I didn't want to overextend them too much. You see I'm even bringing up some Fliegerfast now to accompany them further up because I don't want to put my Rolands in line of sight of the enemy if I can help it. Like particularly things like these T62s that can pick them off quite easily. So I managed to take out a, a T62 there. 2A3 is going to be engaging uh, Protoss's T72s. He's come over with his East German armor to uh, give a hand uh, but uh, no match for the strong German armor the Leopard 2A3. Meanwhile I did bring up some Flagerfaust in the middle I, I, I don't remember if I actually have unloaded these <laughs> I might have just sent them there and they, they didn't unload uh, but regardless I just sent them there to kind of help out with a lot of the aircraft that we were seeing throughout the game so far um, but since it was unlikely that I was going to see too many more on my side uh, as I had already shown a lot of AA. But meanwhile on the right, um, Magulan is still trying to push forwards and uh, contest that, but I'm kind of counter countering the plus two that they've got on the right hand side so far by pushing into November. Uh, but Protoss coming through here with the tier 55 is going to kill off my Jaeger Aufklader finally. A nice snipe though onto one of the Motostralki before they unload in the BMP 1P. Another nice shot there as well from the Panzergrant. Get a sweet shot into the T72 and managed to bail it out with a second shot. So that was really, really big. Roland 2 coming under fire from the HGM. Lucky that that didn't hit. Really lucky that that didn't hit because it definitely would have one shot me. Uh, more rocket artillery coming in that I'm going to try and dodge. I've also brought up some of these looks. Looks aren't particularly great at the moment. They do struggle with like the whole auto cannon curse right now, where auto cannons can be like really inconsistent. Sometimes they do quite a lot of damage, particularly at like, close range. But then when they're close to units, they're like vulnerable to infantry AT. So uh, yeah, kind of they're kind of like not not too good. But if you shoot at something at range over time. The Lux A1 can provide actually quite a lot of you know decent fire support and at least help mess with the cohesion of these infantry units so that the infantry at closer range has a better chance. So here like the Citadelungs for example up against these Motostraki Meta squads and uh, the Lux is just trying to find the fire support at range so there we go, pin them down, nice. SU-22 coming in again with the KH-29 TV missiles, misses the shot onto the 2A3 and that's going to go down. Those HGMs or like the TV guided missiles, they have like a 50% chance to hit, but another M4P going down at least. MiG-21 also going down there, rocket MiG. And there's another one, which my Rolands are just about going to be able to get another shot onto, and down it goes. I tell you what, when the missile intersects with an aircraft at like in midair, it just looks so cool. <laughs> it really does. Uh, but yeah, again, my infantry is not unloaded here. <laughs> I don't think anyone actually mentioned to me. Because at the time we were on a uh, voice call uh, with the Eugen devs uh, that were on our team. So Magellan and Ned. And I was also on a call with Bandana. Um, yeah, we were kind of semi-talking. But everyone was really, really concentrating on trying to win because the game was actually kind of tense throughout. So that was really fun. And if you guys want to see that, by the way, um, do make sure to check out the VODs on like Protoss's channel or uh, Bandana's channel um, or Yogdo's channel. All of them were streaming it live. So um, if you want to see like the live gameplay, you can check it out there. But when you get out of going to be getting into range of the BTR-60. Yogdog not going to be noticing in time. Second shot does hit. Doesn't quite get the kill though. But the third one going to be finishing the job and the sector is entirely ours. So already at a plus two. Now going to be at a plus four capping that. 
because in the middle Bandana and Ned have done a really good job of pushing through here but are currently being flanked pretty hard uh, by Storzk here who is bringing in a lot of these Sapoi backed up by T-80Us and the T-80BV but the Abrams coming across with the Bradleys are going to definitely help push that back and I'm bringing in a Tornado IDS MW1 to land some juicy cluster onto all of those Sapoi I do, it does cost me the uh, tornado, but a very successful strike there onto some of that infantry. Meanwhile, just kind of moving up all of my troops slowly but surely. Definitely could have moved these forward sooner, but you can see I've got all of these supply trucks back here. So a lot of the things I was kind of sending back periodically to repair and then moving them back to the front line. Uh, but meanwhile, the uh, Leopard 2A3, that's going to be trying to move up. Managed to get a shot onto the T62M1. Managed to reverse out of range of the T72GM1 here just in time as I do take down my Leopard 2A3 to one health. Managed to get into a position here where I'm able to engage the T72 and he misses whilst I hit. So a little bit lucky there on that one because... It wasn't line of sight like in this case where I, you know, reversed out of range in time. In this one, that was purely a dice roll. So lucky to be alive there. The Roland two, actually on a follow command here with the Leopard two A three. So as the Leopard <laughs> reverses, the Roland's actually just following it. Uh, wasn't probably intentional. I probably misclicked. Uh, but you can give follow commands. Something that's uh, worth knowing if you do select a unit and then right click on another unit, it will follow it. Uh, yeah, Leopard 2A3, you can see that I brought that back. That's now going to be repairing and then moving back forwards. And my 2A3 in the meantime does manage to take out the T72 GM1 that Prodos brought over to help Yog Dog out. Also managed to clear, clean up a BTR60 that was sat out in the open. And just in general, you know, managed to kill a bunch of tanks out here, um, which was pretty good. Forced those T62s back, killed the T72s. There was the MI24V that Yog Dog kept trying to get on target on my leopards but he was having a hard time doing so and with the uh, with the Rolands I'm able to shoot down these aircraft pretty well if they <laughs> want to hit there we go and down it goes this one in particular was a little bit overextended without AA see my AA is actually probably one tree line too far back I should probably have it behind this tree line uh, where my leopards are currently sitting uh, rather than all the way back there because if they were a bit further forwards there I might have been able to stop the uh, T-72 from getting or the SG-22 sorry from getting that kill uh, same thing on the right hand side for the time being but Bandana and Ned continuing the push towards Rick here in the center where Protoss is and I'm now preparing to make a push through this cover that I can get to Mike, the three-point sector. Lux does uh, bump into all these T-62s. The T-62s can be super strong. They're not going to really match up to a 2A3. And one thing that I was doing here was making sure that I was attack moving from left to right so that we only reveal ourselves to like one T-62 at a time. And it was allowing me to pick them off one by one uh, which kind of you know takes away a lot of the effectiveness that the uh, T62s have on this left side. I know that I'm only going to be taking two damage per hit. I was on three health, so I was happy to fire that last shot. Take out the T82B, leaves my 2A3 on one health, and uh, yeah, nice engagement there for sure. So I was just making sure again to manage the health of these engagements, and since you can see the health of your units. Um, you can definitely kind of exploit that a little bit. I guess it's not really an exploit, it's just part of the gameplay. Uh, knowing the penetration values and so on, or at least just, you know, seeing how much damage you're taking. You know, from the first two shots before the, the last shot there, I knew that I'd only taken two damage at that range. So I'm quite happy to take one more uh, shot before falling back. And thankfully that last shot was enough from my Leopard to get the kill, so it worked out perfectly. Whereas in Still Division 2, it'd actually be really hard to do that because you don't know how much health your tank has. Generally, you know, after you take one penetrating shot in Still Division 2, 
you know that the next one's going to kill you. So you can kind of work around it, but there are cases where you might get hit by an APCR two or three times before your tanks goes down. So uh, because APCR shots in Still Division Two do less damage. Anyway, <laughs> this is Warno, not Still Division Two. <laughs> so let's not confuse anyone. In this case, just using the penetration value to work out how much damage I'm getting, and then. <laughs> Just using that to my advantage, pretty much. Anyway, pioneers, scissorings coming in. They're moving in to where this Panzergrundführer is, so that I can then push them through with that Panzergrundführer and try and counter cap Mike. If I do that, we'll get actually up to a plus seven. Plus four's already a good start. And the Ronin twos here, you know, going to be moving them up finally to the next tree line. Probably should have done this quite a bit sooner. And the Leopard 2A3s uh, I'm now moving up as well, uh, a little bit further. T72 is going to get the better of my Milan, but I do manage to unload it just in time. Marder does get a shot off with its Panzerfaust, but not really able to do too much. These T72s, I think these are actually pretty decent value for money, like 110 points. A close range can really do a lot of damage to a tank such as like a Leopard 2A3. Gotta be super careful with that one, it's only on 3 health. Um, this Panzer Grand going to be testing the waters, does find a, the MP3 and puts a shot into that, allows my 2A3 to see what it's shooting at as well and managed to take out one of them. Now I was actually kind of lacking recon on the front here. You can see I do have these two Jäger Aufklader but they're actually far back. So my Leopard 2A3 is a little bit blind at the moment but I managed to get hits onto both of these BMP3s. Managed to kill a second one there. Another Marder on this left hand side does go down and the poor Panzergrenz are left out in the open. I'm going to be backing up from the uh, MI-24Vs. They're going to be blitzing that Panzergrenz that shows itself for two seconds. But Ronin's now moving up. Seeing if I can get them into range. These have much more limited range than the radar variant. So if this was the radar variant, I think that MI-24V probably would have been in range. With the artillery coming down here, it's a good opportunity for me to come in with the Leopard. Oh, super lucky there, actually. I didn't, I didn't think I saw that at the time. I saw the HGM coming in, so I managed to give the reverse command in time. But, um, yeah, that T-72, if it had landed that shot, probably would have one-shot my 283. So I've got the looks coming forwards. That's going to help with the recon. No, Ronin 2 is now going to be falling back though as all of this rocket artillery starts coming my way. Also going towards the centre here. Smashing into Ned Supply as he continues to engage Protoss on this right hand side of the mid. Marulan trying to push into this sector with the mechanized rifles and Protoss <laughs> even helping out on the right hand side he was definitely spreading himself thin in this one I'm not sure what their plan was but I, I it kind of felt like they maybe assigned like Yog Dog over here they had like Rick in the middle and then they had um, maybe Storzk actually I think it was Storzk in the middle and then maybe Rick on the right and then Protoss kind of covering all over the map but with us, we just went, I'll put two players in the middle, I'll go left, and uh, Magulin, um go on the right. So <laughs> that's what we ended up doing. And my infantry is getting in position now, and I'm going to be starting to move up my Panzergrundfjord to follow them in. Also got a couple of these Marder 1A3 Milans. They're going to be able to kill tanks at close range, because HGMs actually like aim pretty fast in this in Warno. So if you do have like a high power HGM, you can get away with it. I've also got these four Panzergrand units that are going to be popping that BTR-60. These are on their way over here so that I can do what I've just done with these this Fuchs, but with a unit that can actually do damage. I drove them all the way up. You can see I marked it um, next to the grads, and I made whoever those grads were panic. <laughs> they had to back up. Uh, but uh, my Fuchs didn't have any soldiers in them, so that was unfortunate. But T-80 is going to be going down there. Nice kill. More rocket artillery flying towards where my Panzergrenz were, but they've now moved on. But the Citadungs, accompanied by the Pioneers, now engaging the Motostrauki left over from those BMP3s. I'm also going to be moving up a Leopard 2A3 so that I can engage enemy armor. 
And on this right hand side at the moment, some Fauci Megas coming over. So, time for the F 104s. be able to shoot down one of those MI8s. I think it did like just unload the Fauschmager up there, but my F-104s doing a decent job. Do take a bit of damage from the AA, but do manage to get out. So pretty happy with that little strike. Now up to a plus eight as uh, managed to push up quite well on this right hand side now. Managed to get the contesting commands into that sector. And in the middle, they've got a really, really strong position here, Ned and Bandana. And I'm now trying to make it even more ground on the left-hand side. So, Roland's moving quite far up. You can see I've got a bunch of them on this right-hand side. Because of these MI-24s that are preventing my infantry from really pushing forwards aggressively at the moment. Got a couple of looks that are going to be pushing all the way up to try and see what they can find. I've also got the Jaeger Aufthaler on the way. I could have probably moved forward with this, and I also left a Leopard 2A3 back here. There was a few units that I kind of forgot about throughout, but this one moved back for the for the supply here initially. But I've also got supply further up, and you can see I've continued to bring in all of these Unimog supply vehicles so that I can use them to supply and resupply my infantry um, throughout the game. <laughs> my Flink of House back here, still not unloaded. I'm glad no one noticed throughout the game, but <laughs> I'm noticing now, that's for sure. So the plan here was to get a few of these Marder 183s to kind of flank towards Bravo. Maybe we could find enemy artillery or enemy command vehicles. And I also had one that was kind of rushing down the road to maybe find the enemy uh, artillery, like the rocket artillery back there. But BTR-60 is going to be found. And we're going to be taking that out. That actually neutralizes Mike. A bit of a mistake there, having it that far forwards. Didn't move it back. Your dog here having a bad time against my Leopard 2A3s. Not really having the armor to, to counter me here. Is he there as well? Every shot from the Leopard 2A3 that lands is doing plenty of damage. I've also got the Rolands now putting pressure onto the MI24 VP, and this thing ain't cheap. That is a 300 point helicopter. TATBV going down, and the T62 is not even in range to fire back at the 2A3, so we're just going to be engaging that. My Rolands is going to want to back off from the BMP3s. And well, we've killed the enemy command. We've brought in our own command so it's a plus nine and as soon as we capture Mike it's gonna be a plus 12 at this point in the game with seven minutes remaining on the clock so UH-60 <laughs> command there <laughs> providing M240 <laughs> fire onto that infantry but Yep, going to be spinning out for the time being. Nice artillery coming in onto Rick Motschutzen in the center. And the, oh, I gotta love those planes going down. Very cool. Really good chance here, actually, for me to kill the T-80 BK. You see Shortsk. Uh, Shortsk. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of a difficult name to pronounce. Has brought in his T-80s, which are going to be pushing right into my flank. I, of course, do have these units kind of ready to pounce onto their flank in Bravo. Uh, but yeah, that is a lot of T-80s uh, coming up this road. Somebody was certainly placing some points. <laughs> Marder going up against multiple BMP-3s. Not really the uh, best place to be for a Marder. One of my recon infantry going to get taken out there. I'm now moving up all my Unimogs to give myself some resupply. I did buy in a load of these Alpha Jets so I could start to kind of mess with the cohesion on these T-80s. But, yeah. It is ticking very fast now. We're actually up to a plus 14 across the board as we do now contest Echo as well. Uh, these Marders pushing in to the backside do end up bumping into a lot of these Conkers, so not going to be getting anywhere and there's a big push actually coming back from Yorkdog here with his BMP3s and such 
My 2A3, this was actually falling back from the engagement with the BMPs, but being pushed from this direction and this direction manages to get the Leopard 2A3 caught out. And there you have it. Well, that is game as we do hit the score limit. And what a game it was. A great, great fun. Really, really like that map a lot. It was a very, very fun to play on. In the end, 8,805 kills to 3,355 losses. Did pretty well. Uh, Ned did well as well. 7,345 kills, 3,430 losses. Bandana did well. Magellan, unfortunately, having a little bit of a hard time on the right-hand side. Protoss did okay. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, we kind of did a number on your dog there. But... The Leopard 2A3 is really trumping a lot of the enemy armor that he's going to be able to put against me. And in a pretty open ground engagement like that, it's really kind of hard to manage. But the use and reliance on these Ronin 2s worked out really well because none of the seed aircraft could target anything whilst I was able to shoot down plenty of aircraft. So you can see that one in particular shot down multiple aircraft and these things, you know, paying themselves off massively multiple times over and uh, leopard 2a3 is getting plenty and plenty of kills anytime they kill a tank plus extra support units that's all you need because you've got quite a lot of availability of them uh, the tornado this was the strike that it managed to get so it got four sapery and a captured supply vehicle uh, in that one cluster strike before it went down in the mid there and yeah great game and once again, just want to say, fantastic map. I'm really looking forward to that coming to the live version. Uh, it is still undergoing a little bit of testing, I think, but this was kind of just a preview for you guys. Regardless, this was all about raising money for Action Against Hunger. So just a reminder, uh, if you do have some spare cash and would like to donate, make sure to check the link in the description or the comments. Uh, to, you know, see if we can just absolutely destroy the last events uh well how much we raised in the last event which is yeah one uh, roughly one thousand eight hundred dollars so yeah thank you prodos for getting me involved in this and uh big thanks to all of the other content creators who have helped shed light on this as well but i'm going to leave it there hopefully you guys enjoyed this game and a look at the new map and also kind of appreciated uh, the devs getting involved and playing with us it was really fun to talk to them as well again if you'd like to see the live gameplay of that um, with you know their own reactions to the game uh, then go to Prodos's channel Yogdog's channel or Bandana's channel they all have vods of those games uh, I will be coming back with you or back to you with a second game with the devs so look forward to that but that's it for now hopefully you guys enjoyed it thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video goodbye